Hello, greeting my friends. This is Dr. Mohammed Nizami again. Uh, well, I welcome you to another uh, video on the um, techniques of radio frequency and microwave uh, circuit designs and modeling. I'm an RF uh, circuit uh, board level consultant. Uh, if you have any um, need for um, a consultant, external consultant to design any subsystem that you have, I welcome you to reach out to me. Um, I have many years in the United States experience and uh, I work remotely with your engineers and uh, the, drive the product development from concept to board level, to fab files, to even support you during testing, um, bench testing. Um, I specialize in transmitters and receivers, anything from DC to 35 gigahertz. Okay, so let's resume today on the concept of um, antenna array uh, feed networks. And this is basically where we um, detail the uh, construction of the, uh, the power division uh, ratios that uh, one would need to, uh, to carry out to distribute the signal levels to every individual um, element within an array. And this is primarily for uh, microstrip antenna arrays, okay? Now, this is my phone number that you can reach out to me. I operate from Jarash, Jordan. Jarash is what you see on the background here. That's my hometown where I was born uh, before I moved on to the United States and spent many years in the United States studying and working. And now I'm back here semi-retired. Um, so uh, this is the phone number that you can reach me at. This is my email that you can reach me at. I'm also reachable via the app phones, the, uh, uh, the phone apps on Android and uh, iPhones. Those are uh, namely um, WhatsApp, Telegram. Okay, so let's, uh, today we're gonna continue talking. If you recall last time we covered, uh, let me see here, we did cover the, uh, uh, let me go over to my channel. Uh, Okay, last video was this video where we talked about the uh, the uh, design of of the um, some of the sub array uh, components that you might uh, need. Um, my video uh, tube uh, video channels video tape video sessions basically um, I have them in here. This is the part one that we covered the um, the uh, concept and uh, detail a little bit more. So I welcome you if you didn't watch that part, please go ahead and watch that part. And also please make sure you. Click the uh, like sign if you like the video and then um, subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate that. But today we're gonna continue talking about the tapered antenna illumination using unequal T junctions and uh, Wilkinson dividers as well, which we will leave for the next session. Power divider feed networks, okay? Uh, as you know, we introduced uh, the, the concept of uh, flat panel antennas is um, very common nowadays. Um, it can vary from defense systems, uh, airspace, and namely we use these uh, antenna arrays to increase the gain of the overall budget link um, for our, our communication links. So a single antenna that you might design, a single element, uh, you can increase the gain of that element if you can add more elements in a, in a, a specific um, um, determined uh, distribution and distances uh, to make panels like these that you can see on here. Um, you can also see those popping up nowadays in a Starlink, for instance, is a good example. That's a large array antenna. 
okay, that has a uh, the sort of distribution systems that I'm going to be talking about. Likewise, 5G and 6G, all of them have these um, techniques. Now, the tapered panel, um, the, the tapered uh, flat panel antenna array uh, power distribution, um, we the power that we distribute over the entire arrays from a single uh, transmitter source, which is the power amplifier, or on the reverse side from the receiver, we have um, an LNA that hooks up to uh, uh, the array. So the, the, the signals that combine on the receive side and split on the transmit side, uh, we can design those so that they can deliver the power to the following a, a window function. Uh, these window functions are basically what the intention of that is is the to reduce the uh, side lobes, just like we would, as I will introduce in a minute, do to a pulse shaping, where we take the pulse and communication theory, a binary pulse, and we can shape it through um, different windowing to reduce the side bands that would spread out in the adjacent channels. The distribution can be simply uniform distribution, which means we don't taper. Which means that's a, the analogy of that is similar to a pulse that is rectangular windowed. Uh, so therefore, the sink over uh, sine x over x, which is a spectrum of the of the pulse, will have side lobes at 16, 13 dB below the peak, the main peak. Um, while the other ones, there are three other uh, two uh, methods uh, that we use: the Taylor tapering and the dolph chebyshev tapering and binomial tapering. And the, all of these are basically polynomial coefficients that we would derive to um, um, implement in the antenna uh, factor, array factor, to do the shaping. So here is the array factor for a linear uh, array uh, uh, from one to n elements. What we do is we have a coefficient in here, that coefficient, the amplitude coefficient, that amplitude, we can either leave it one, which means all of the patches will get the same amount of power, or we can use some kind of window function to Chebyshev or, or uh, Taylor uh, to implement tapering of the uh, um, elements on the uh, sides. And the way we do this, basically, these ones we derive uh, the, the, in the past, we used to look at the, these are tabulated. So you can see here that for 26 dB of side lobes, they tabulated the, uh, these polynomial coefficients from 1 to 16 for both the Taylor um, type and the, um, the other type, which is the, um, the Chebyshev, okay? And of course, what we do is we take the array factor for the antennas, the, the array, and then we basically come in here and let's say for instance, if we have eight elements, we come here to the eight elements. And what we do is we choose these coefficients in here to do the tapering for all eight elements. As you can see here, the when the order is even, the middle two antennas get the same power while we taper down to uh, the sides in a cosine fashion, um, the other coefficients, and they're symmetrical, basically. What you, whatever you do on this side of the array, you do the same exact on this side of the array. And if it's even odd, now the 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 middle one, the odd function, the odd ones. Let's say, for instance, there's a the nine here. The middle one is one, basically, and then we can uh, then we start tapering down to the sides on that one as well. So, okay. All right, so um, I mean, for the for the Taylor ones, okay, for the uh, Chebyshev, we still have other cases. So now, how do we do this tapering? The uh, how can we control these coefficients so that they they follow this uh, power distribution in here? Of course, these are amplitudes. You would need to square those to get the power. Uh, we do it with either with unequal power dividers. We can either use Wilkinson, as you can see here, where the uh, the output ports are not equal powers. 
or we can do it with the T junction, okay? Now, in the last video, we went through the differences, and I'm not going to go through that here, but essentially what you need to do, you can use uh, an impedance, the ratio of the power from the input to the output determines the impedance, the characteristic impedance of this line here. And this line and this line in here, these two lines are what determines the, uh, the, the magnitude of the power between these two ports. And that's how we implement this. And in a minute, I'll show you some examples. So just to demonstrate the physics behind this, if you take, if you go back to principles of digital communications or signal processing, where you take a pulse, uh, 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 or you take a pulse, and that pulse, if you FFT it or DFT it, in the frequency domain, you can see that the um, there's a main peak. It follow, it's a sine x over x type, where we have a main peak, and then we have uh, 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 symmetrical distributed um, uh, other replicas of the same um, main beam, except uh, at lower powers. And it turns out for uh, rectangular windowing in here, if you don't do anything to the pulse, that first side lobe is 13 dB down, okay? And you can go back to antenna box and signal processing box and, and see how they derive that. Now, that's principally what you would do to um, the shaping, uh, tapering of antenna array as well, okay? So for instance, in here, if you take a, a pulse like this and you shape it with a window like this, you get uh, using Hanning function, and that's a, famous uh, window um, windowing function, you can see that the side lobes go down below 30 dB below, okay? And of course, the trade-off uh, for this is that the main beam has been widened a little bit. So as you can see, this comparison to this, the, the main beam widens a little bit. And then the gain, the main beam maximum um, gain uh, actually is reduced by fractions of a dB. Here's a, a plot that I took out of one of the references. And basically what this does is shows you um, the, an, array, uh, an array of antennas where we do uh, tapering on the coefficients, on the array factor coefficients. And you can see the difference when you don't do anything, which is the uniform distribution, where the power gets distributed to all antennas equally, okay? And then we do Taylor and Dolph Chebyshev and Binomial. And you can see that the, for instance, with Chebyshev, the uh, side lobe in here for this order, particular order here, went down to about uh, somewhere on the 18 dB, for instance, while her Taylor, it went down to almost 33 dB down, okay? And why is this important? Because obviously when you have an antenna, you want it to be directional. You don't want any uh, sidery uh, transmission or picking up of adjacent, geographical adjacent uh, uh, emitters. And that, so therefore it's to reduce the interference to comply with uh, regulations uh, by uh, from licensing and so on. Now, how do you generate these coefficients? It's pretty easy nowadays. Used to be that you have to have uh, tables to look them up. And there are huge tables because for every, um, depending on the side lobe level, SLL uh, here, um, you get different coefficients, okay? So um, um, so what, what nowadays we do is we use Chebyshev. Okay? I mean, the uh, we use uh, MATLAB to do that for us. And MATLAB has a built-in function that you can generate these, and I'll show you in a minute. So it's just basic, for instance, if you want to uh, have a Chebyshev window uh, that is of length eight and the side lobes are 25, which is the, in the, this, these coefficients in here, you basically uh, run this function on MATLAB. And the uh, here's a uh, just a capture, screen capture of what you would get if you do help Chebby window on MATLAB, you get the explanation of how to use this function. Okay, and here is an example where I took this and say, uh, give me uh, eight coefficients and then I wanna normalize them. So uh, what I do get is eight coefficients in here, that's the index of the element. And this is the power levels. And you can see that the middle two are the maximum ones. So these are normalized 
okay? And, and therefore, this is the amplitude. And of course, you square that, you get the power, and that will uh, determines for you the, the, the um, distribution of, of the signals on the elements. Likewise, we do for Taylor windowing, for its Taylor, W-I-N, you basically specify the order, which is in this case, for instance, I'm trying to run these coefficients. You get eight, and this is, there's another parameter, which I will talk to you about in a minute. And then you specify the side lobe level, for instance, and here is minus 40 dB. And then you get basically that. So here is another example showing you what the Taylor when, um, if you do help Taylor when on MATLAB, you get uh, explanation of how to use this function. And they give you an example in here. Okay, and here's an example that I took 40 dB down side lobe and eight coefficients, what you would get. So let's uh, let's see what, uh, how we do that. Let's do, see if we go to MATLAB, go online, MATLAB. I know this is an RF uh, design video, and uh, so therefore we're trying to do... Uh, Basically, uh, but in a minute, we'll get back to the, uh, so Taylor, let's see, uh, Taylor when, uh, and now what I want to do, eight, four, and let's say 26 dB down. Oops. Okay, so if we type the uh, basically the uh, command line if we got in MATLAB, all you need to do is basically here is the Taylor when doing function, for instance, for eight coefficients uh, with 26 dB side lobes, this is the coefficients that you would get. Uh, now we want to normalize that, so we're going to maximize it by the maximum value in these ones. So you normalize this and you basically get the two middle ones are all ones here, just like you would get in the Taylor function. So let's go to the uh, Taylor function. Now this is Taylor 8. You go to 8 here, you see two, two ones and 0 0.8, 0 0.5, 0 0.3. And if you check in here, that's basically what you get. Okay. And so you can Get the same thing, do the same thing to the Chebyshev windowing as well. So this is Chebyshev 8 at uh, 26 dB. And so if we go back to the Chebyshev table and you look for what, 8, that's basically what you get 85735. And that's basically what you get here. So these ones, as you can see, that we have a mirror image. So these two are the same as these two. So when we do the, uh, when we get back to the, um, to the, uh, 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 the, um, the, the um, T-junction distribution networks, all we need to do, for instance, in this case, is this will be a mirror image right in the middle. So these here, all you have to do is just design the, the distribute, the, um, the passive, uh, antenna feed network in here, and um, you basically you just copy that onto here. Okay, so anyway, so once so again the the um, these coefficients can be the tabling coefficients can be derived from MATLAB, and um, um, and so um, you can go back and do it for linear and for two uh, two dimensional arrays as well. So essentially, just to um, just to final, uh, just to take uh, to go ahead and get back to out of circuit designs. What we're doing essentially is, if you observe here, uh, this is a plot showing you from minus twenty to minus sixty-five side lobe levels uh, for this uh, 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 tapering, and you can see what it does. It just basically de-emphasizes the side. Uh, elements and and so eventually that's one the one of the issues that you're going to get if you have a large array the um, as you depart away from the middle coefficient of the array uh, the power division ratio starts to be very little tiny and very soon you're going to start realizing the width of the lines that you need for the T junction or for the uh, works and dividers are so tiny that they can fall off before, say, five mils, which is 
the minimum that you can fabricate on um, uh, on on substrate nowadays, commercial substrates, and that's when basically you're going to end up with uh, with a, an array that is um, uh, truncated, where some of the elements you might, might as well just consider. Well, let's just drop them off because the coefficients. If you go back to the uh, MATLAB here, and if you just say you increase the order, let's go to the Taylor one, increase the order to say, um, you know, 90, uh, you're gonna get back to um, some of the coefficients that, that uh, um, no, I changed it on one, didn't change it on the other one, 90. Uh, so basically, you're going to get back to the coefficient to the coefficients where they kind of become really tiny. Ninety didn't do it, but uh, you get the idea. And I'll show you in a minute uh, how how this is um, this impact where it comes. So as an example, uh, so basically you end up all these coefficients that you have. You have to go back and and uh, design this t, um, t junction in here so that it actually splits the power in accordance with these coefficients in here. So you start out with a two-way splitter in here, and then all of a sudden you have to start going down and down in power on every uh, element. And so it gets very complicated, but the, the good news is that it's symmetrical. So whatever you do to one half, you do to the other one, and you can use spreadsheets uh, to do that. This is one example where we're showing basically what happens when I told you that some of the side component elements, the power level becomes almost diminishes, so you don't need them. And that's why you end up with, with an array a lot of times. This is from open literature, I got this, where you can see that these elements in here, there's, there's very low, these elements were canceled and so forth. Um, so let's uh, let's get back to the principle of how we could do those. So you've got this array that you would des somebody designed, an antenna designer designed, and he said to you, okay, you're the designer of the feed uh, network. So the feed network now has to distribute this power and they give you a profile of uh, uh, the side lobe levels and you go into MATLAB and obtain these coefficients. The first thing you do is you decide, okay, let's do a, uh, a T junction design Sp split uh, the 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 all the um, the elements in here all the power division is done using a T junction the T junction from last video and I urge you to watch that video if you uh, didn't and then come back here basically we have uh, the power comes in and is split with micro strip lines both sides so and and then the the impedance on these lines in here right at the junction, determines how much power goes into this path versus this path. And that you can derive mathematically, basically. You can say Pn is the, uh, you know, the, uh, the RMS voltage square on this side divided by the impedance of Cs, which is in this case is a 50 ohm or ZO in this case. And then you end up with a ratio where it's saying, okay, the this impedance looking at this junction has to be this much, Z0 over the power ratio between the this port and this port, which is this K here. K is less than one, which determines how much power goes into the, the, the ports, uh, this port versus this port. So if this port here, uh, this is one, if this port gets KPN, this port here gets the rest, which is one minus K times PN, okay? Now, it turns out that these impedances uh, they're going to be high impedances. They're going to start out being way more than 50 ohms or your typical um, micro strip lines where you can implement them, say, down to the minimum width of, say, 5 mils, for instance, if your PCB house can manufacture that. Um, and so, therefore, but really, this is the equivalent impedance. So, eventually, you want to, uh, from this impedance, you have to, match again back to 50. And that's where we use the quarter wave suction in here to match from this impedance to uh, the 50 ohm in here. And I'll show you in a minute that really mathematically, the impedance that is required at these po two points doesn't have to be physically implemented. What you can do is this, as uh, if you design the transformer, the lambda over four 
the quarter wave transformer to transform the impedance virtually from the value that you need, Z1 and Z2, to ZT1 and ZT2 here, it turns out to be okay, okay? So let's take as a first example, let's go to, um, uh, uh, let's go to um, um, ADS. And the first example that we wanna do is design a splitter that will do the uh, the uh, 3 dB, the, the equal division. The equal division, uh, if you look at the equations for that, uh, basically, um, if we do equal divisions on both of these sides, that means the power ratio is basically one. So you end up with, zero, with Z1 equals Z0 over K, which is one half, and that becomes 100 ohm. The same thing on the other side. So you need to fabricate this with 100 ohm here, 100 ohm here, uh, and, and then this is 50 ohm, and then transform again to the 50 ohm. So between a 100 and 50, you know that's going to be uh, a transformer in here has to be 70.7 ohms, and that's the, the basically your Rockison divider. That's really what it is. Uh, yeah. So this is what we get, and, and when we do that, okay, uh, this is the, um, the um, circuit in here. I'll go back to ADS in a moment. But you essentially have 50 ohm comes in, we have the T junction, you have the two lines that determines uh, the Z1 and Z2. And then you have another suction, which is a quarter wave length in here, a quarter wave length in here, which is done according to this, to transform from that these impedances back to 50 ohm. And that looks like this, okay? And that's basically the layout of that. And that is, when you simulate that, you can see here that it's a three minus three dB, and then the return loss, of course, like we said in the last time, S11 is great, but S22 and S33 is not, okay? So let's go to ADS. So basically, this is what we have. We have a source, and then we have the 50 ohm line in here. We have a T junction, and then we have one line, which is 100, another one on this side, which is 100, and then we have the uh, 90 degree, uh, the uh, quarter wave transformer in here, which is 70 ohm. Okay, and then the rest is just 50 ohm all around. This is just to take the signal around to bend it around 90 degree bend. Okay, now if you simulate this, basically what we get is basically, is like I said, here it is. It's pretty nice. And I designed the 90 degree um, transformer or the quarter wave transformer to be at 3.5 gigahertz. It needs a little bit tweaking, but you can see it resonated right at that frequency. So now if we go here and you generate the layout for this, this is basically what we're getting. So we're gonna say, okay, that, and this is basically what you get, okay? You get the, um, basically the these two, these are the 100 lines, okay? And this is the 70 ohm line. And this is back to 50 here and the 90 degree um, bent, okay? So we do this and now, but realize now what will happen. These two 100 ohms really, we don't have to really physically implement them. As you can see here, what really we need to do is a virtually um, that impedance because essentially as we go to the array, hundreds of elements, these lines are gonna be so tiny that you can't fabricate them. So what we do is we just basically uh, go ahead and just um, remove them and just basically uh, put the, uh, the quarter wave transformer in there. And let's see how we, uh, this is basically what I did in here is I took the same one now and we're gonna short these. These 100 ohms, we're gonna short them. And as you, if you um, sweep it, you get exactly the same thing. And that's basically, so you get 3 dB and you get same exact uh, return loss. And that's what I did here in this presentation. I captured it for you here. So if we remove these lines, like this one here is with the 100 ohm lines, okay? If we remove these two lines, we end up with this here and they both have exactly the same performance. Okay. So let's go next and let's take some, let's do an example where, of course, 
in the uh, antenna ray uh, uh, feed network, you, you get the uh, equal power splitting a few times in the tabled one. And then eventually you go into the polynomial coefficients and they're all going to be um, basically a, a cosine distribution. And uh, just so they're not always as easy as doing um, the, the equal power division coefficients. Uh, so let's do one where we the ports is basically uh, one ninth of the power comes into this port and eight ninth of the power comes into this port. First of all, let's take the ratio of this to see how much power uh, um, uh, ratio there is, okay? If we take P1, which is the power on this one, is basically one over nine, take the 10 log of 10 log of that, it's minus 9.54 dB, okay? So that's what should come on this here. I reverse these, by the way, the this narrower line is the high impedance line. Where the other side of the power, okay, it's eight ninth of the power, so it's a half dB. So you can see that literally the other side in here, this line, the, the transformer here, should come very close to 50 ohm because it's almost, you're just knocking the signal down. You're leaking just a tiny little piece of that in there. Now let's go to the equation, see what the impedance is, has to be to do that. Z1, basically we take Z0 over the, um, the power ratio and we end up with 450 ohms, okay? Which is a huge um, uh, impedance to do the, uh, the 9.54 dB. Where the other one, basically we get, um, it's uh, 56 ohms, okay? And of course now in these ones, that's virtual impedance. So you can't really implement 450 ohms. That's like micron width. The width of that is microns and you can't fabricate that. So the, but the transformer, transformed virtual impedance of that is basically gonna be looking in here this piece in here and this piece in here, they're going to be at 150 ohm and 53 ohms. So this line in here is going to be 53, and this line in here is going to be 150 ohm. And 150 is basically on this substrate, which is duroid 5880 at 31 mil height, that's about 10 mils, which is acceptable. Okay, so let's go to that. So this is the circuit for that, okay? And this is the frequency response. We basically get this and this, and you can put the marker on three and a half gigahertz somewhere around there. And you can see that the, uh, the power ratio is minus 0.54 dB on one, while it's minus 9.5 dB on the other one. And that's exactly the ratios that we have. We have one ninth, which is minus 9.54 dB, and um, eight ninth of the power on the other side, which is only a half dB, okay? And this is how the PCB looks like, okay? And let me go to that one. That's basically, uh, let's open that on here. So that's uh, uh, unequal, that's this one here. So you can see here it is. So we get again, um, we have, so this is two tenths of a millimeter where the other one is 2.22 millimeter. Those are the two lines. So this is the the um, this is the 150 ohm, and this is the uh, 53 ohm. And the rest of the circuit is the same. So if you simulate that, you get exactly what we talked about. This is exactly these ratios: minus 0.5 dB and minus nine tenth of a dB. Okay. Now the layout of this is basically generate the layout. And this is basically what it is. So you can see that this is the 53 ohm line in here, and this is the 150 ohm line in there. And that's what you get basically. If you look at these arrays that we were looking at just right here, you can see that where these high impedance lines are, where the other lines uh, turns out to be closer to 50, to the antenna 50 ohm impedance line. And so um, one thing that I want to warn you about is that very occasionally uh, you're going to start getting to a point where the, the impedances becomes very high and that you can't implement them anymore. They can be higher than 150, say uh, 170 on. And that's basically where one, th one way to do to solve this is by starting out with a, an input impedance that is lower level, not 50 ohm. Because we always have to multiply, remember, 
the impedances of these lines are calculated, which is 50, in this case, 50 here, the Z0, divided by the uh, power ratio, okay? Now, if, if I chose 50, so therefore this line came out to be, um, when we do this here, sorry, when we do the here, the transformers, we do, we transform from 50 to this or from 50, 50 to that. We can change that to go to lower impedance. We can go, say, 30 ohms. And in this case, if you multiply 450, to, I mean, uh, 450 times 30, that becomes um, a smaller number. Okay, so that's one way to, so there is a another trick to this that you can actually uh, play with this. Let's take another example and show you how we do this on a uh, on a on a, on, a, on an array level. We did it here uh, for a two port network, but let's do it at two elements same. Let's do this for an eight elements. So if we take say the eighth um, elements in here, and these are the tapering coefficients, and that's I generated them in MATLAB. You generate them like this, you normalize them, and you have to square them second is because that's the power. So I generated them here, and then we square them, and this is the uh, distribution of that. So basically you take Taylor of this, you maximize, you you take the, you divide it by the maximum to normalize it, and then you square it. And that's the power numbers. And these are, I, I tapped them in here. So this is one, you can see here, this is mirror image of this. The first thing you wanna do, is you really have to work backward on this. So you start out with the um, uh, power coefficients at the antenna uh, input, at uh, the element, at each element, and then you work backward to build up the uh, power ratios because you need to build up the power ratios at all the T-junctions to be able to compute these, design these T-junctions. So in this case, if you add, if, if the power split between those two elements, which are, one side is 0.36, uh, 306, and one is 0.14. We add that, those two numbers, we get 0 0.14, 0 0.41. And then the same thing we do the adjacent one, we get 1.6. At these two numbers, you get two. And then do the same thing in here. At this point, we get also two. Now two and two here, you can see that's, that's an equal power split. So the ratio from four to two, that's three dB. So that's a three dB. Uh, that's why you see equal impedances on both lines. And in here, you start uh, saying, okay, what's two divided by 0.41 and two divided by 1.68. And then again, we do this 0.41 divided by 0.14. And that's basically what you see in here. And you can use Excel to do this, okay? And you come up basically with the equations for all these lines in here, okay? And of course, you can... The, this here is not symmetrical to this. So, but these here, eight elements, will be symmetrical to another eight elements in the network. So therefore, you don't have to recompute this. You can do the same thing, let's say to, um, um, sorry. You can do this, say, to a larger array. This is a, this is a 48 elements, okay? And the 48 elements in here, we we split it because uh, these are the elements. Uh, the, the first column is the element number. The second element is the polynomial coefficient amplitude. And then the third one is the power. And that's basically what you see in here, in, the, in this calculation here in MATLAB. So what I'm going to do, if you observe these, look at them, you can see that they're basically, they have an image uh, they have an image right at 24 elements. So that means the 48 elements uh, can be split into 24 and 24. And uh, so we only need to do the 24 elements. So taking these numbers, the last column, put it in here, not the last column, half of the last column, which is from one all the way to these points here. You can see the last element in here, power is 0 0.0597 and 0 0.0638. Very little power to these ones in here. So as a designer, you know you can come in and reduce the size of this array, and you say these we're going to truncate this by by eliminating these. But you can see that these here are going to require really high impedance lines to get the power to be reduced to these levels. So what we do in here is basically exactly the same. We start. You add these two numbers. You put a number in here, and that figures what this T junction is. The impedance lines on the two transformers on here, and so forth. 
So, and I did a few of them just to do a hand calculation. So you add one, one and 0.9, that's 1.96 at this point. Yeah, the two, these two numbers on this side, you get 1.91, almost the same power, okay? So you can see that, a little difference. Now, again, you add 1.9, 1.96, you get 3.87. So now we know the ratios in here and the ratios in here. Now, again, do the adjacent ones. So 3.26 and 3.87, you get 7.13 in here, okay? And then you can collect the numbers on the other sides and end up with the same thing, okay? And then you start computing these impedances. Of course, you do this in a spreadsheet if you want to reduce the errors, but you can see that. And it's really easier, it's easy to see the errors because you can see that a lot of times the numbers that you're going to get, one number doesn't make sense, and therefore you can. So you see the impedances in here, okay? Starting out um, all the way. Let's do another example. Let's do another polynomial in here. Here's this uh, eight array again, and we'll put the elements in here, powers, ratios, and you sum these two numbers, you get that number. Sum these two, you get that number. You sum these two, you get this number. And you sum this and this, you get that number. So we can start out saying, okay, this one here, 4.2 and 2.1, that's a 3 dB split. So there's two lines in here has to be really um, uh, 100 ohm lines, okay? All right, so, and then uh, of course uh, you come in here and uh, of course uh, this would be 70.7. Uh, 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 you do the same thing to all of these lines, okay? So you end up with these ones and you can figure out, of course, you have your link calc ready to do every time you get an impedance, depending on this um, substrate that you have, you compute the width of that and you can generate the, uh, so, so we took the coefficients again from the MATLAB in here, we put them on the array, and then we worked backward, reverse the power ratios all the way to the input in here. And then basically what I did here is I uh, did a few of these, I think this branch is this one, this one, and this one, I didn't, I did them, and that's what you see here. And I'm gonna run them in a minute just to show you. So we did them and I, I, I did, uh, um, um, kept the uh, virtual lines in there, but they are shorted, meaning they don't come out in the uh, design. So let's close this and let's go to, uh, we close this one and we can go to this one. Okay. Okay, so we have this here. So, this one here, I believe, is the 7070. So that's the 3 dB one. That's the equal power split, which is uh, this one here, okay? And then the other two are these other two, so in here. So you can see the other two, uh, the division ratios between this here to that, to there, and this, that, to there, so you can see that one side is always going to be low impedance while the other one is high impedance, okay? So let's run this. Oh, by the way, before we do that, let's go back and uh, you can see that the ratios, the power ratios at here, you can see the, uh, the uh, power loss in there. And so for this one here, it's minus 6.8 dB with minus one dB, the unequal power split where this one here is minus 7 dB, 0.11, and minus 0.94 dB. And this one here, of course, it's minus 3 dB. So, and that's what we see in here, for instance. You see this one here is minus 6.8 and minus 1 dB, that's one splitter. And this is the other one, minus 7 dB and 0.96 dB on the other one. And this is the 3 dB, one minus three dB for both of them. They're overlapped on top of each other. Okay, and then if you generate the uh, the layout, basically, we can generate the layout, and that's what you see here. Okay, so you, you got, this is the equal power one, okay? And this is the other two, all right? Now, what you could do, uh, the, uh, the virtual uh, lines in there, if let's say that you wanted to, see what really happens if you were to implement those.
Okay, so let's do the layout on this, generate the layout. And what you end up with is basically a line that just can't be fabricated. You can see that in here as well, okay? So the reason I kept it in the schematics is really just to, as an illustrative uh, thing in there. All right, so let's get back here. So that's really done, this example. Now, okay, so this is basically, again, this is all three, uh, which are the these branches, just this T-junction, this T-junction, this T-junction. Now, of course, once you're done, you can glue all of this together in the schematics and add whatever, um, you know, extended. Uh, so this is for array uh, factors that are linear for linear array, but for planar array, meaning two-dimensional array, it's exactly the same thing, really. So this is the uh, array factor uh, definition for uh, M by N uh, elements. And so basically in there, you get exactly the same thing, except it's two-dimensional stuff. So you get AM of N, which is the coefficients that, that you would need. And here's an example that I took from somebody that did this on CTS, just grab the, uh, the figure. And so look at this, this is a seven by seven, which is 49 elements illuminated using Taylor illumination factors. So you can see that when it's odd, you get one single element, which is one, the maximum, and then the rest is just tapered down on each side according to the cosine um, shape. So you get one, which is in this one here, that's the maximum, and then you get on this side, these are the, co the coefficients, and on the other side, it's exact symmetry, uh, symmetry of these. So when you feed these, the feeding network, and when you design these here on this side, the other side is just replica of that. And you carry on the same thing exactly in all of the other uh, element rows. So you can see that the next one on top is these ones is also has an image symmetry. And this has an image symmetry. Of course, again, we observe that the corners are very low power. And the coroners are always dangerous because they cause a lot of mutual coupling and so forth. So you could trim this by saying, okay, I don't want this. So you can eliminate these ones in here. You can keep them in there, but don't connect them. Um, just just keep them as a, just to balance the uh, impedance loading on these three adjacent ones. Um, now, again, the Wilkinson dividers using uh, the tapered arrays um, I'm going to look into that on the next session, one of the next sessions. But a lot of times you end up with some really interesting results where you look at the coefficients, you start eliminating um, um, elements that are weighted um, by very, very tiny numbers. And you get some kind of weird case where you, for instance, you would need a three-way splitter on the side. And that's where, where a lot of times you, if you see a need for a three-way splitter, unless it's like for a Dorothy amplifier, um, it's really, this is a case where you get that, okay? So you can see that there is symmetry in here between this row and this row here, and this between this row and this column. And then of course, between these two here, okay? And, and, and so on. So there's also symmetry in here as well. Now, there is another concept which is related, but uh, I would just want to mention it, which is sequentially rotated um, feeding networks. And that's basically where you take the, uh, the uh, elements are fed using um, a, a series of quarter wave um, uh, crescents uh, sections that will implement, that will make the power, the phase shift between the the um, the elements, the quadrature elements are, are a 90 degree quadrature. And that's basically to reduce the mutual interference and some other issues as well. You can, you know, go back and study this theory, but this here, the design of this is interesting. So we have to design a, a, a feed network in here that will feed the signal by specific magnitude or sometimes equal. And, and then, but they have to be 90 degree offset from each other. Okay, so you feed here, the first one is zero degree, which is this one. The second one will be 90 degree because of this line here is a quarter wave. But look at this impedance in here. The other one is a, is a, is a higher impedance, but 
uh, it gets um, uh, 180 degrees. And the last one is the highest impedance uh, feed line. And then the, um, the phase shift is 270. So you end up with this type of phase arrangement on all of these. And you can see online, I grabbed some of these examples on arrays. You know, this is a 64, this is probably 256. Um, but you can see that how they did that. So you still have the T-junction distribution network on all of them, but you can see that we've got the sequential phase rotation in here and also on the subarray as well. So wait for that session uh, just on that. Okay, so I hope this, uh, now again, what the takeaway from this is that when you have an array, you get the coefficients from MATLAB at to, uh, for a specific side lobe level. You put the, you find out the, uh, the, the, you put those coefficients in here and you work backward to the feed point, the uh, power uh, so that you can, uh, get the power ratios at every T junction and you start just computing these equations in here. Very simple, you can do that on spreadsheet. Okay, so I hope that uh, you uh, somebody benefits from this. Um, again, um, like I said before, so the tapering really, the tapering is, well, we do the tapering to the array factor function, okay? And then the, the tapering is done using two elements, basically. The one today that we covered was the T-junction. And the way we do the tapering is by varying the power ratio between these two impedance lines that corresponds to the power ratio division. And, and so next, let's do, uh, we, we can do the same thing you can do with Wilkerson. And the trade-off, of course, is, is basically we covered that in the last session. You can look at that. Okay, so until next time, this is Dr. Mohammed Nazami thanking you. Uh, please um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so we can increase the appearance of this material so that others will benefit from it. Um, you can reach me out at this number in here uh, for any uh, assistance or any thing regarding the material covered in this video. Or if you have any opportunity, if you or if you're if you run an organization that needs an RF um, microwave circuit consultant. I, my rate is very reasonable. I operate outside the United States, so it's, I'm really cheaply offering uh, the rates. I work with you from concept to fab files, basically. I do the uh, system level construction, the system level simulations with system view and other packages, and then the circuit level using uh, ADS and uh, other simulators, uh, HFSS, and then um, generate the uh, the uh, circuits with the uh, cadence, um, Allegro and ORCAD, and schematic capture, and you get fabrication files, Gerber files from me ready to go. And I come in if you'd like to me to follow on and come for on site to do the uh, to help out in the um, in the testing. I could do as a, uh, that as well. So until next time. Thank you again. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.